All right, the next and probably the biggest new feature in Scratch Live 2.0 are effects. Effects have been one of the longest standing feature requests in Scratch Live, and we finally get them in 2.0. Now, effects are going to be available for everyone. There's no restrictions here on the effects. So uh, if you have the SL1, the 57, or the SL3, uh, you're going to get effects. Now, to enable effects, we need to go into the Setup menu, and on the Plugins tab, you're going to see a new option here called DJ Effects. So let us check that box off. And let's exit the Setup menu. Now, the effects are going to be enabled over here with this button next to the Recording panel. So let's click the DJ Effects button, and this will bring up the new effects in Scratch Live 2.0. Now, you have two effects processors, and each processor has three slots. So you can have a total of up to six effects in Scratch Live 2.0. So what kind of effects do we have? Well, if we click the drop-down list on any of the slots, this will bring up the list of the available effects. We have a breaker effect, which is simulates like a turntable slowing down, uh, bit crusher, delay, echo, flanger, high-pass filter, low-pass filter, phaser, repeater, reverb, reverser, and tremolo. Now, I'm not going to get into all of the effects. I'm going to make a separate video on that, uh, but let's just take a look at a couple of them. Uh, let's take a look at the bit crusher effect. Uh, right now we are in simple mode uh, with the effects. If you click this button over here on the right, this will bring up the advanced mode and this will show you all the different parameters that you can adjust and whatnot. Now as you can see, there's a lot of buttons and uh, knobs going on here with the effects, so a MIDI controller is pretty much going to be essential if you want to use the effects. Uh, it's no fun using your uh, mouse and keyboard to try and control the effects. Uh, speaking of MIDI controllers, I also just happened to pick up the new Tractor Control X1 uh, controller. And I must say, it works really well even with Scratch Live. Uh, so you might want to check that out if you're looking for a MIDI controller to control the effects in Scratch Live 2.0. Again, this is all MIDI assignable, and it's just like assigning anything else. So click on MIDI, and just simply move your mouse over the uh, knob or button, and just assign it like any other thing in Scratch Live. Alright, so let's take a look at some of the effects in Scratch Live 2.0. As I mentioned, I'm not going to go through them all. I'll make a separate video on it. Uh, but let's just take a quick look at a few of them. So let's take a look at the Bit Crusher effect. And I have my Control X1 already all mapped to the effects. So that was the Bit Crusher effect. Now let's take a look at the uh, delay effect. Set up to a uh, half beat delay. We have optional feedback, which basically turns it into an echo. I'll start with no feedback. So that was a half beat delay. Turn up the feedback a little bit. And it's important to note though that the effects are unfortunately going to be pre-fader. They're not going to be post-fader for obvious reasons. So things like the delay and echo are going to be pre-fader. Uh, so if you want to have to imitate a sort of post-fade, you have to stop the track internally in Scratch Live. So that was that's how you kind of simulate a post-fader effect. You have to stop the track internally in Scratch Live. Uh, next, let's take a look at the high pass filter. Now, with the filters, you can do both manual and LFO beat sync sweeps. I'm going to take a look at a manual one. If you want to do a manual filter, turn the LFO all the way down. And I like to crank the resonance up to give it that nice whooshing sound. So that was the high pass filter. Let's take a look at the low pass filter, which oops, I already had any gauge. That was the low pass filter. And finally, let's take a look at the reverb effect. Good for buildups. So yes, these are the new effects in Scratch Live 2.0. Now 
Now you can also edit the effects also and make your own customizable effects. Uh, in order to do that, you need to click on the edit button over here. And this will bring up the uh, panel mode to uh, edit your effects. What you need to do is unlink anything, uh, which I'll get into in just a minute. Uh, set the parameter or move the knob to the lowest parameter you want it set to. Uh, click that and then move it up to the highest parameter you want to. And then click plus. Uh, link it back and then click on save. And then this will bring up a pop-up box and you can name your own effects. So Conix Custom whatever. Uh, save that. And then it will be available as an option in the drop down list. Uh, so that is how you edit and make your own effects. Now. Uh, let me go to a different effect just to get a better look at it. Now, these knobs right here uh, link the parameter to this knob up here. These knobs, uh, these three big knobs on each slot, this is called the super knob. Now, these sort of act like a wet-dry uh, knob. Uh, also, if you have the parameters linked to it, you can MIDI map the super knob, and that will turn all the linked parameter knobs uh, at the same time. So, instead of trying to turn forward different knobs at the same time you just link them to the super knob and then if you turn your uh, you know the super knob if you have a MIDI assigned that will turn all four of the parameter knobs uh, at the same time uh, so that is the uh, purpose of the super knob uh, but other than that yes these are the new effects in Scratch Lab 2.0 uh, as again this is for everyone SL1 users, SL3 users and TTM57 users uh, though it's a little redundant with the 57 since it already has built-in effects in the mixer, but uh, now you get them uh, double in the software as well. Uh, so there you go. These are the new effects in Scratch Live 2.0. Alright, the next new feature in Scratch Live 2.0 are going to be Smart Crates. Now what is a Smart Crate? Well, if you've used iTunes, then you're probably already familiar with Smart Playlists. And Smart Crates work pretty much the same way. If you're not familiar with Smart Playlists, I'll try to explain it to you. Now, instead of making your own crate and manually importing the songs uh, into it, like you normally do, and what you're used to, uh, Smart Crates do most of the work for you. It's kind of like an advanced searching system. Instead of using the search column over here, you're going to make your own crates based on certain criteria. Uh, so if we click on the new blue button down here, this is going to be uh, Smart Crates. The orange is just going to be your traditional uh, manual import uh, crate, and the blue one is going to be Smart Crates. So let's click that. And it'll bring up a new box, and this is where you're going to input the uh, filtering conditional parameters, I guess you would say, uh, in order to populate your crate with tracks. Now there's literally dozens, if not hundreds, of examples that I can do, uh, but let's just pick a simple one. Let's say I wanted to find all my tracks in my Scratch Live library that have a BPM between, let's say, 125 and 130. So what I'm going to do is click on Add Rule, and this will bring up a new row, and we're going to click the drop-down box right here, and I'm going to select BPM, which is that right there, I want it greater than or equal to 125. Now, I also want to add another rule because I want the BPM to be less than 130. So I click BPM less than 130. All right. Now, I also like to key all my tracks with mixed in key. So let's also add another rule saying I want the key uh, to be, let's say, 8A, for example. That's a pretty common key in uh, electronic dance music. So. The Smart Crate now is going to have all my tracks between 125 and 130 BPM and have a Camelot key code of 8A. So let's click on Save, and that will make a new blue crate over here. Uh, not an orange crate. Blue signifies it's a Smart Crate. And in here will be all my tracks that meet those criteria. So BPM between 125 and 130 and have a Camelot key code of 8A. So that is the basic gist of Smart Crates. Uh, an important thing to note, though, is that when you import new songs into your Scratch Live library, the Smart Crates will automatically update with uh, any new songs that uh, meet the criteria for the Smart Crate. And of course you can make more than one Smart Crate and you can make multiple, so uh, it's just the same thing. Uh, just go back and make rules. Uh, unfortunately, right now you cannot make a Smart Crate a Sub Crate and it can only be Parent Crates right now uh, for obvious uh, logistic reasons and stuff like that. Uh, but hopefully we'll work on that in the future. But uh, for now, yes, this is the new Smart Crate feature in Scratch Live 2.0. And this is mainly to get people away from using iTunes, because uh, that's one of the major reasons a lot of people use iTunes is for the Smart Playlist functionality. Well, now we get Smart Crates and Scratch Live 2.0.